Good morning, Kansas City. My name is Mrs. Zeke. I'm the Southeast High School English teacher, and we are here today to talk about English. Today, we're going to go over a little bit about what we talked about last week concerning ancient China. You took some notes over the week in comparison what, and comparing what you know about American history to the Chinese history we learned last week. And then we're going to build on this idea by applying an English standard that's common from fifth and sixth grade into high school, how to summarize the main idea of a passage. And we're going to do this by looking at an article about ancient China. First, I want to talk about some tips and tricks for finding the main idea. I'm sure this is something you have been practicing in um, all of your English classes over the course of the past few years. But as you develop your reading habits, um, it can be cumbersome to retain all that information and then spit out one main idea. So here's some tips and tricks to help you stay focused in that. First of all, it's always good to look at what the Missouri Standard states. So for the sixth grade, and there's an equivalent for fifth, it's asking for you to explain the central or main ideas of a text and cite evidence of its development. Summarize the text. The key word in the standard and the key word that you should think of when asked to find the main idea is summary. What sentence or two could you state that summarizes a passage you've just read? So main idea equals summary. It's always good to read a passage and then reread it. Sometimes when you are reading, you might gloss over details or realize you've gone through a whole page and haven't retained an ounce of what you've read. That's okay. Take the extra minute to reread the passage. Then state the main idea out loud, whether it's simply to yourself, your parents, or a classmate. State what you think is the main idea of the passage out loud first before you write it down in a well thought out sentence. We are gonna try that today with a passage around some more information about ancient China. So last week we really focused on the development of the Shang and Zhao dynasties. Today we're gonna to read a little bit more about what happened before those two dynasties um, get a brief introduction to the Great Wall of China, and then also um, why some of the things that happen in China are so mysterious because of the lack of literature surrounding them. So let's give this a try. I'm going to read the passage for you first, and then we'll give you some time to reread the passage as one of our tips and tricks. Follow along with me. The history of ancient China is shrouded in mystery. Around 1700 BC, a dynasty named Tsang was founded in China. After Tsang Dynasty, Chu Dynasty ruled over China. During the reign of the Chu Dynasty, a stable administration was established in China. Tsai Wangti, the great ruler of the dynasty, built a great wall of China in order to protect the country from foreign invasion. Of course, he ordered to burn all the books in China except those books concerning agriculture, medicine, and astrology in order to create a new literature in China. As a result, many historical facts concerning ancient China could not be brought to light. After the Chu Dynasty, rulers of Han, Tang, Shang, and Zhao dynasties ruled over China. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to reread the passage. Ten. Five. All right. After rereading the passage, can you come up with the main idea? Another tip and trick, say it out loud to someone around you. What is the main idea of this passage? All right, let's take a look. If you said something like, 
China has a very mysterious history, or China has had a lot of rulers in its history, or China has had many events happen over the course of the history, then you are right. Um, there are a lot of details in those two small passages about the rulers and their names and events that happened, but the main idea is captured by one of those three sentences. Here's a bonus for you for today. Oftentimes, the main idea comes in the first sentence or two of a passage. Let's take a look and see if that's true. The history of ancient China is shrouded in mystery. It is right there for us. So a bonus tip and trick for you today is that oftentimes it's in the first sentence of a passage. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. My name is Mrs. Zeke, and we'll see you then.